All right, y'all. Here at Extreme Teachers, our mission is we empower teachers to discover, develop, and utilize their superpowers to transform students' lives. Let's go, y'all. Come on in. Let's go. Let's get it. How are we today? How y'all doing today? Let's get it, y'all. All right. So y'all know me. I come ready. I'm already ready. I stay ready. What's going on? I see the comment lounge jumping off. Let me get my cursor over here so I can see what's going on. Hey, Tanya. What's up, Janine? Let's go. I want to have a little fun tonight, but y'all might not like me. Some of y'all may not like me. We're talking about homework tonight. We're going to talk about homework. So do me a favor. Repost, tag a teacher, share. Share in the inbox, share on your page, either way. Because sometimes I don't like sharing stuff on my page, but I love sharing in the inbox because some people really need the information. So go ahead and share it either way. Thank you. I appreciate that. Don't forget to follow me on YouTube. Valari Humphrey, Valari Humphrey. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's get it. All right. So last time we were together, we talked about, which was last night, we talked about deep questions printables. That was fire. That was fire. So if you missed that one, grab the replay, jump on the replay squad and watch that one. That was really good. Very, very, very easy to learn and easy to do. And it's some, some great questions, key questions you could be asking your students and you can make it about some homework as well. All right, let's go. The problem with homework. Mm, the problem with homework. Let's see. Let's talk about it. So Homework that seemingly has little meaning or usefulness. Now, I can say when I first started teaching, I gave homework for the sake of giving homework. I thought I would pause. I gave homework because they teach you that you're supposed to give homework so many days per week. That ain't cool. What if your kids don't need homework? What if they grasp or they've mastered the concept and you give it homework just because? Come on, y'all. Why do we give homework? If a kid can show mastery in class, why do they need to do 15 to 20 problems for homework? I'm just asking. Not IJS. I'm IJA today. IJA. I'm just asking. So are we giving meaningless homework? Is it our fault? Is it? Is it our fault that kids don't love education? Because it just, it's so much. Let's go. Assignments that take too long to complete. Now, I always gave either the odd, the even, or every third problem, every fifth problem. Why, why must you give homework that take, okay, they even got a scale that says every grade level is 10 minutes. So if you're at sixth grade, you should be doing, it should take you 60 minutes to do homework. Wow. Okay. But is there a way we can show application? We talked about infographics last night. There's some different ways that we can show mastery. So when we give it homework, let's be creative, y'all. Let's be creative where, and if we're doing um, some, some team stuff and science working on something and geography, how can we merge those two when we make an infographic? How can we merge the learning? But we got these babies working too long. It's working. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Let me, for stuff they're not going to use. Not my fault. Assignments that many students don't complete. We're dinging them because they didn't complete an assignment, but we're not dinging them because they didn't master it. So are you looking for completion or mastery? Yes, okay, but if you teach them in class and they do an assignment and they do they start the assignment in class and then they get a little bit for homework, boom, they got it. But how much how much of the grade counts for homework? And then is it meaningful? Are you because parents go, shouldn't they have homework every night? Come on now, mama, stop. We're not parenting your kid. Because he's at home doing it by himself nine out of ten. I'll say seven out of 10. I'm not going to put that on the parents. But the higher the grade, the less assistance they get from their parents. So why are we having our kids locked down to the table all night? Right? They lock to the table and then there becomes a problem later. All right. If y'all disagree or agree, come talk to me in the comment lines. Let's see. Latrell, what? let's see what Latrell had to say. 
Remember, sis, there are a lot of biased educators in the system, even when most of them have come out of the bottoms themselves. You better come through, especially in rural areas. Yes, yes. They know most of these children don't have the right help at home. Look, if this right here, this season, didn't tell us that they don't have the right help at home, huh? they don't have the right help at home. Give me some stars on that. Give me some hearts on that. Y'all love throw some thumbs up on that because they don't have the right help at home. They don't have the right help. So we're if they don't master it in class, how are they going to master it when they get home? So what can we do? Y'all know I push mastery. Y'all know I push mastery. I'm just saying, let's go. You right, Yvette. Completion. We push completion. Yes, we do. We push completion. Not mastery. Let's go. Let's go to the next one. I'm not going to tear. I'm be in and out. Teachers sending students home with assignments that they are ill prepared to complete. They not. They can't complete them. We already said they get. They're not getting the assistance they need at the at, from home. But then the kids not prepared to complete them. It could be the Chromebook. It could be the book. It could be a multitude of things that makes them not prepared. But if we we allow the learning to go on in the schoolhouse, and then we can add some blended learning, some other things on the outside of the schoolhouse. So give them some, give them videos to watch for homework. Give them something else. But let's do some more blended learning where they get, they have the sit and get when, when they're in the classroom. But then when they're at home, make it something where the family can join in. They're doing an interview, make it some interactive activities. I know every kid not going to do all the work. I get that. I get that. But go for mastery. Go for mastery. All right. Ineffective homework assignments. You give all these assignments, y'all, all these assignments, all these problems, all this, all this. Now, I'm, yes, they need to know how to write. Yes, they should be writing papers. Yes, they should be doing research. Yes, they should be doing all of that. I'm not saying they should not do that. But how many sentences do they, sentences do they have to dissect before they write a paper? And then what do I fail your class because I'm not good at writing, but my oracle skills are good. I'm just asking. Let's see what's happening in the comment lounge. Janine. Janine says, I know I have to take ownership of that sometimes. I have reflected and tweaked my teaching accordingly. Amen. That's good, Janine. Yvette says, Ed Puzzle is good. Ed Puzzle. Okay. I got to check that out. I don't know about Ed Puzzle. I got to check that out. Thank you for the recommendation. I appreciate that, Yvette. All right, let's go. We're not going to Terry. I got one big question. I got one big question for you, and I'm going to talk to you about it. Does homework cause students to resent and sabotage the love of learning? Just think about this. Let's talk. Let's talk. Y'all ready? Now, when kids are younger, they love their teachers. They love getting up, going to school. Most kids, right? Most kids. All right, you got the other ones. I get it. And the part that I want y'all to realize, like somewhere around third or fourth grade, it stopped being so much about praise and we start highlighting the problem. We stop praising and we start projecting. We don't talk about well, it's a problem. Oh, they, they're coming outside the box. They're not in the lines. But when they're younger and they come outside the lines, you got it all up on the refrigerator. <gasps> Look, oh my God. Somewhere around third or fourth grade, it was like, why is the giraffe purple? Elephant's not yellow. So then you start criticizing and the praising goes somewhere, right? So when, so what happens is, but to me, my 30 years experience, we praise much less. So their love for education doesn't grow. Because we've decreased the amount of praising that we do. Because if a kid gets an A, we write it on the paper A plus and we give it back. So where's the hoopla for the A like the hoopla for the F? We got conferences. We got all these things set up for kids that get Fs. What do we have set up for our kids that get A's? 
I'm not saying we overlook them, but still, even a kid that gets an F need to praise. That's why Rita, Rita Pearson was my aunt. She didn't know she was my aunt, my mentor aunt. I call her my mentor aunt because Rita would say plus two on the paper. And he's like, but I only got two right. That's two, that's two more than a zero. You're on your way somewhere. So why can't we push that? Begin to push that, the positive side of learning and not let everything be negative. Whether you get it, you don't get it, negative so-and-so, or you got to have parent conference. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. How do we change that? How do we look through a different lens when it comes to homework? How do we do that? And then with us not being able to control the home environment, but we're requiring that they do something at home. I'm just saying, I was in a very affluent neighborhood and I had homeless kids in my school. And guess what? If the parent doesn't report that they're homeless, which we call McKinney Vento, but if the parents don't tell us that they qualify for McKinney Vento, we're treating them as if they are any other kid. So yes, we want the homework done. Yes, we want you to turn this in. Yes, we want you to go here and go to the library and do all that. But they're sleeping in their car, but we don't know it. Can you just fall back on the assignments a little bit? I'm just saying. All right, let's look in this comment lounge before we get out of here. So Latrell says, most of the curriculum coaches are just walking through the building. Come on. Are walking through the building. They are not checking on what the teachers are doing. Schools need tutoring labs in low performing schools, right? Not low social economic, not Title I schools, low performing schools. There's some low performing schools in affluent neighborhoods. There are, truth be told, right? Low performing schools to assist with assignments. There are missing assignment apps. Hello, the schools can use school-wide to help students' performance. I love it, Latrell. I love it. I love it. That's good. Something else she said. There should be a check, there should be checks and balances, a check and balances system. Yes, true. To make sure teachers are submitting grades and missing assignments. Now, let me tell you one of my pet peeves. This one of my pet, like where you just go, ooh. I get it. When you're giving homework and you're not giving feedback and you're not giving the scores back for, for weeks, you've given five more assignments and now you're giving back assignment number seven and you're on assignment number 12. Don't give it if you can't correct it within three days. Because it's not adequate feedback. Because if you gave me something on Monday and I get it back two weeks, you give it to me on the 12th, I get it back on the 20th. All the assignments in between the 12th and the 20th I've done, I could have done wrong now. Because I didn't know that I didn't understand what I was doing. So if I wrote a paper and you told me I, was, I, was, I had a lot of grammatical errors, I've written other papers and done other homework assignments, but I haven't had a chance to correct them because I didn't know. So let's think about that when we're giving homework. So give homework that they can get feed, they can get feedback from and grow. I can't grow if I don't get it back in time enough. I can't grow if I don't get the homework back in time enough. So let's think about that. So we ask the question again, does homework cause students to resent and sabotage the love for learning? Does it sabotage the love for learning? That's my question, y'all. I'm not going to tarry. That's it. That's all, says the clock on the wall. Y'all go be amazing on purpose. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. Here at Extreme Teachers, our mission is to empower teachers to discover, develop, util and utilize their superpowers to transform student lives. Let's go, y'all. Y'all be amazing.